It's hitting 160. It's a little bit off that right now, 1.58%. A two-year yield, let's get a quick check as well as we start to talk more and more about possible rate hikes coming. That's sitting pretty much in place just under half a percent. Financials are on the move, as you might imagine, with these bond yields doing what they are. The regional bank ETF just hit an all-time high. And Fed Chair Jerome Powell's news conference starts in just a minute. Before that, let's get to Mike Santoli at the NYSE. Mike, I mean... You know, is this the reaction you think they they wanted, so to speak? I mean, what, where would you say the risks are going into the Fed chair speaking himself? Yeah, Kelly, I think a modest tension release uh, upon the announcement ahead of the press conference probably is, is fitting with what the Fed is after here, which is to try to drain the drama out of the whole taper process. It definitely came in a bit less hawkish than perhaps the market was clenched up for, given the aggressive moves globally in the rates market last week, $15 billion a month per, uh, per month in tapering in terms the reduction of asset purchases probably on target in terms of the consensus so therefore not more aggressive so all of it fits together i think and in terms of the timing of the first rate hike it's fascinating to see how the market has repriced to sort of expect one or two by the end of next year but it's not a riddle that there's an answer to that the market can actually have the the, the ingredients to figure it out there aren't clues uh there, there, there basically are too much data between now and then uh too much can happen so i think it's everybody kind of looking at the shadows and trying to figure out where whether the Fed can get lucky in saying that they expect the uh, inflationary forces to, to prove transitory. You know, Mike, you mentioned the markets are a bit clenched up, but right now we're seeing the Dow has actually risen from its lows about 90 points higher than its lows immediately after the announcement. And the S&P and the NASDAQ both fractionally higher since the announcement was made. If they were clenched up, is this pretty much what they were expecting? And it's just sometimes... Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I think they were a little bit uh, tensed up ahead of this. Like, I, I think we're talking about very, very narrow moves, uh, very much an as expected uh, statement. So I, I don't know that necessarily you were going to see some uh, some dramatic swings now. The pattern has been the market has actually softened up during and after a, uh, a press conference by uh, Jay Powell. Doesn't mean it's always going to be the case. Uh, so I do think that you have to keep that in mind. Keep in mind the fact, too, the S&P is up 8% in 30 days. So anything at all could be an excuse for it to cool off uh, just a little bit here. But I don't think anything said in the statement so far uh, was cause for alarm or really disturbed the basic view here of a relatively orderly process of reducing that asset purchase program. And am I imagining things, Mike? Or is it become a little bit quieter in terms of the chatter about replacing him lately? Right. Uh, it does. I mean, I don't know exactly if it seems if the Biden administration doesn't see the benefit in doing so right now or exactly what you would get in terms of incremental dovishness relative to what uh, Chair Powell has already delivered. Yeah, exactly. All right, Michael, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Mike Santoli with the setup. And again, we're looking at about 1.595% uh, on the 10-year franc. So the markets have moved higher, bond yields have